Welcome back to the Pacific Crest Trail. You are joining me at mile 80 of my southbound PCT through hike. In the last episode, you joined me as I ended my out and back stretch to the Canadian border and started my way south through the Washington wilderness. In this episode, you will join me after my side trip into Stahican for a resupply. Together we will hike 108 miles over six days, passing through some of the most spectacular alpine I have ever seen. I make my first trail friends and get to camp with them every single night on this stretch. I am moved to tears by the beauty of this place. I negotiate through massive Pacific Northwest forests and face my first signs of a potentially hike ending injury. Oh, and at the end, I finally show you what I get up to in town when I need to resupply and reset. day eight on the Pacific Crest Trail. So I had a whirlwind of a time at my second resupply in Stahican. I definitely am not in a good schedule yet. So I didn't document anything. I didn't get all my batteries charged. I was feeling very flustered, to be honest. It was a lot going on, but I managed to do my laundry, have a shower, eat two meals at the restaurant and get my resupply box. So now I'm back on trail. And today I've been mostly in this beautiful forest here. And it's a really exciting day because it's the first day I've hiked with people. I met two trail friends and we've been hiking together and chatting. And honestly, it's so wild how quickly the miles go by when you're chatting. Now I'm on the section from Stahican to Stevens Pass and I'm expecting this to take me five, maybe five and a half days now because this day is a half day. And then I'm hoping at Stevens Pass I can take a little bit longer of a break and do another resupply. So I'll be headed through Glacier Peak Wilderness. Okay, it's day nine. I'm passing by this huge fallen tree. And I'm feeling pretty good. It's a climb for the first half of the day up to a pass. And I'm hiking alone again. I always have a slower morning than everyone else. I don't know if that'll change or not. We'll see. <laughs> Probably will. And yeah, planning on 21 miles today, probably. Feeling pretty good. My Achilles is stiff, so I'm just monitoring that. Um, but overall, I think it's okay. It's loosening up. So I just don't want to overdo it if I can avoid it. Camera's dusty. <laughs> and I think I'll be up in the Alpine soon, which is always the best part of the day. I'm on the exposed climb now and the peaks are opening up. There's some behind me, some in front of me. And it's just, wow. <sighs> so spectacular. Now's the time when hiking gets hard because it's hot and I'm climbing, but it's just all part of it. The views make up for it and knowing I'm climbing up towards the Alpine, always a really good feeling. I made it. Oh my gosh. The black flies have gotten really bad and it's hard to deal with them, to be honest. It's like, stop. <laughs> okay. I'll try not to get too upset about them. I made it to my pass for the day. So I've done all my climbing. Well, probably like 95% of my climbing. It's just downhill now down into the next river valley. So I'm actually struggling a little bit. I'm finding my um, legs are getting really sore. At this point in my hike, the trail was very busy. I was passing lots of northbound hikers who were almost done their 2,650 mile through hike. It was really neat to get to talk with some of them about their experience. I was also camping with people every night, sometimes squeezing my tent into the last viable spot. On day 10, I slept beside this beautiful river last night, so I was sleeping to this 
wonderful noise. So I had a really good sleep. And um, everyone is gone, so I camped here with three other hikers. They all already left. I like to have my coffee and go to the washroom before I start hiking. I just feel better, faster, smoother. I'm gonna do 19 kilometers today, and based on all of the trail data I've received from other through hikers, Today is going to be one of the harder days in terms of trail quality. There are a lot of deadfall trees along the way. Blowdowns is what people are calling them. Um, and I just am going to have to go up over, around, under, you know, just slows you down a bit. So I'm just planning on that. I took Advil today for the first time in a while just because I don't think my knee is going to be a problem. I think it's just a little irritated. It'll sort itself out. Look at this thing. This thing's huge. Ah. Ah. <laughs> wow. I got to try to get a perspective for you. Look at this thing. That is a big Douglas fir tree. Wow. This forest is spectacular. Humongous Douglas firs and Western red cedars. Just like, whoa. And yeah, it's just stunning. So today I'll be probably doing quite a few over, under, arounds. But honestly, so far it's been really good. <laughs> Love this forest. Even though I didn't film them, the three women I was hiking with on this section were a big part of my PCT through hike. We became friends quickly, and the conversations I got to have with them were incredibly impactful. I still stay in touch with them to this day. It's my first tears of trail. I'm just so moved by this beauty, and I'm so incredibly beyond grateful and joyful that I get to be here right now. <sighs> and I'm so happy I get to show you a slice of this. <sighs> I can't believe I'm here. <sighs> You might hear through hikers saying, quote, the trail provides, end quote. It's a common saying when referring to miraculous things that happen while on a long distance trail. When I first walked up to this lake, I saw the first friend I had made on the trail on day one, and it was so comforting and exciting. The trail provides. I camped here with six other people scattered around this spectacular lake. The magic of this moment was particularly impactful because, I didn't want to admit it to myself yet, but the knee pain I had started developing had reached an unbearable intensity on the final descent of my day. I was seriously concerned that this could be a hike-ending injury, but it was not something I was ready to face yet. 
This place and these people helped comfort me when I really needed it. I got to chat with my new friend from our sleeping bags as the sun set. The trail provides. Day 11 on the Pacific Crest Trail. Got going around 8 a.m. And starting off with a climb up from the Alpine Lake and then descending down from there. The knee is still very sore today, so I taped it. And the uphill's okay, but the downhill is where it's really been hurting me. So I'm a little bit nervous about that, but we'll just see how it goes. I'm really close to camp now, cresting into the Alpine, which I always love, and so ready to be at camp today. I've done almost 15 miles, so shorter day than the last few. My body is just really feeling it at this point. I'm cozy in my tent now. My knee is actually feeling a little bit better tonight than it was last night, so that's good. And if I can pull off two back-to-back 20-mile -back days, I'll be done this section and I'll be in Stevens Pass. See you tomorrow. I just spotted in the distance a group of mountain goats. I really can't see them very well at all, but... I'm just so thrilled that they're there. <gasps> wow, they're so amazing. Today has been so beautiful. My first glimpses of Mount Rainier. I've just been in Alpine all day so far. I think I've done about 11 miles so far. I took a break at seven. I was planning to do a break at 7.14 and then hopefully just get to my destination. A few more miles until the lake I want to camp at. My knee's hurting now, definitely. It is like the last mile of my biggest day yet, 23 miles, so it's to be expected, but yeah, I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do about it, but I'm at the point where I need to get out of the backcountry. All my batteries are almost dead. My food has almost run out and it wouldn't be safe for me to stay out here. It is day 13, 7.47 a.m. And it's my last day of this section. I'm hiking the Stevens Pass today. And it's just started to rain. And this camera is not waterproof. So I don't know how much I'll film today. But when I can, I'll try to show you. But I've got 18 miles. My knee is sore. I'm a little bit nervous about that. But otherwise, I'm feeling good. And I'll let you know how it goes. I made it. I am here at Stevens Pass, which is where I finished, and I was gonna go into Leavenworth, but I looked into the hotels and everything seemed to be booked up for the night. So last minute I changed my plans, I walked a very short distance to this Alpine Club hut, the Mountaineer's hut, and um, for $60 I get a bunk bed, so that's where I am now, which is nice, and they fed me dinner and they're gonna feed me breakfast, so pretty good. 
I ended up deciding to get a ride down into Leavenworth and take two full zero days to rest my knee. That means two days where I hike zero miles. I booked a hotel room for two nights and settled in for some food and rest. Just checked into my room and it looks so good. Bathrooms, <laughs> yes. been hanging out in my hotel room for I guess a full day now but I got good news today from my physio she doesn't think that it's too serious um, just a bit of an irritation of my one tendon where it attaches to my kneecap she doesn't think I need to stop hiking she thinks I can do it and that maybe I'm overthinking it a little bit um, so I have to be cautious of it, of course, and not um, completely ignore it, but I also need to not focus on it as much and not catastrophize about it in my mind. I'm so glad I had this extra rest day here in um, Leavenworth, and I feel rejuvenated and ready to do another big section. And of course, I'll be bringing you with me. See you then. Thank you so much for watching. After two zero days, I was finally feeling ready to hit the trail again. In the next episode, you will join me on my section from Stevens Pass to Snoqualmie Pass. And it was a massive highlight for me because... Goodbye, all my little mountain goats. See you soon.